very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture in the series of uh, lectures on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, in this lecture we will introduce the idea of low pass signals and band pass signals. So, I will quickly define the notation and then we will continue. So, let a signal be defined as x t time domain and its Fourier transform is defined as x f in the frequency domain. Then a signal is called a low pass signal or a baseband signal when its Fourier transform or spectrum is non-zero only for a bandwidth w around 0 or mathematically xf magnitude of xf is not equal to 0 only for minus w to w or equivalently xf invariably 0 for f not in minus w to w this and similarly so this is the mathematical definition of a low pass signal similarly x t is called band pass if for some carrier frequency f c and bandwidth w x f not equal to 0 only for f in mod f in f c minus w 2 plus w and that is x f equal to 0 for mod f not in f c minus w to f c plus w. By extension, we can view the spectra. So, if x f is low pass if or if x t is low pass, then the magnitude spectrum of x t f minus w to w when this is 0. So, low pass and zero f c minus minus f c plus w minus f c minus w f c f c plus w f c minus w. So this is band pass. So these are low pass and band pass signals. Now the question is can we relate these two? Can we relate band pass and low pass signals? Or before we try to answer this question, let us define something else. Let us say that let me define the positive spectrum of x t or x f as x plus f and the signal x plus f is defined as x f for f greater than 0 half x f for f equal to 0 and 0 for f less than 0. Similarly, I can define another signal x minus f equals x f for f less than 0 half x 0 for f equal to 0 and 0 f greater than 0. Naturally, we can see that 
x f equals x plus f or x plus f plus x minus f that is one thing. Another thing is letting the unit step or defining the unit step or let defining a slightly tweaked version of the unit step as u f equals 1 f greater than 0 half f equal to 0 0 f less than 0 then this. So, that said the question is that what is the purpose of doing this. So, to answer this let us consider a special case of bandpass signal. So, to get to the purpose of this let us consider a special case of bandpass signals that of the real valued bandpass that of the real valued bandpass signal. So, we consider a special case of bandpass signal a real valued bandpass signal. So, a real valued bandpass signal or when we talk about the a real valued bandpass signal we have that x t is a real valued bandpass signal or x f is the Fourier transform of a valued bandpass signal x f is the Fourier transform of a real valued bandpass signal and hence since x t is real valued x f equals x conjugate minus f this comes from the properties of Fourier transform that is the positive and ne negative spectra of a real valued signal are complex conjugates of each other which means that x f is or the magnitude spectrum is an even function the frequency the phase spectrum spectrum is an odd function of the frequency. So, the magnitude spectrum is an even function and the phase spectrum is an odd function of the frequency. So, now we can say that fine. Now, coming back we have that x f equals f plus, but for a real valued signal since the positive and negative spectra are complex conjugates of each other we can say that x f equals plus x minus f because the positive and the negative half of the spectrum will be complex conjugate of each other. So, this will be true. Now, since we have defined x plus f as the part of x t that only has a positive spectrum only has a positive spectrum see that x plus f does not offer conjugate symmetry in the spectrum and hence x plus t is 
means x plus t is complex valued. Now, x equals the inverse Fourier transform of xf equals the Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform of xf uf equals xt convolved with because uh, this is multiplication in frequency domain which means that uh, the inverse Fourier transform will be a convolution in the time domain. So, this is Fourier inverse Fourier transform of uf and from Fourier transform tables we know that this equals plus j this or this equals half x t plus x t convolved with j by 2 by t this beast and this thing is called the Hilbert transform of x t the convolution operation with this LTI system or the convolution with system whose impulse response is given by j upon 2 pi t is called the Hilbert transform and this is denoted by x hat t. Also the Fourier transform of x t convolved with j 2 pi t is minus j signum of f x f sorry this j should not be here j is here and 1 this is called the Hilbert transform this is called the Hilbert transform and so this 1 because when if I include j this will cancel the j out and we will get a 1. So x plus t equals half x t plus j x hat t this beast. Now, if I look at x plus t or x plus f plus f equals or x plus f not equal to 0 for f in f c minus w to f c plus w by definition and 0 for f not in this set fine. So, this is f c c minus w this is the magnitude spectrum of x plus f magnitude spectrum of x plus f. Now, let me define another signal x l of f equal to x plus f plus f c which equals twice x f plus f c u this. Therefore, x l of t the inverse Fourier transform of x l of f is twice of x t or x plus t minus j 2 pi f c t equals x t plus j x hat t minus j t. This equals x t cos 2 pi f c t plus x hat t sin 2 pi f c t plus j x t sin 2 pi f c t plus x hat t cos 2 pi f c t this beast. This xl now 
Similarly, XL conjugate T is or rather and doing this I can XL conjugate can be written directly by just putting a minus sign over here. Then if I take XL T J 2 pi F C T I will get X T plus J X hat T or the real part of XL T or J 2 pi F C T equals X T or what I can say is that I can define a real valued passband signal x t in terms of another signal x l t another complex valued signal such that x t equals real part of x l t j 2 pi f c t this. So, if I look at this now I see that hence I can confidently say that or I can say that x t is the real part of a frequency shifted version x t is the real part of a frequency shifted version of the complex valued signal x l t x t is the real part of frequency shifted version of the complex valued signal x l t and x l t is known as the low pass we can easily see that x l t complex x l t complex signal x l t which is low pass. So, x l t by definition I can say that uh, this x l t here so by definition definition I see that x l t is low pass and hence x l t is known as the low pass equivalent signal of x t. So, x l t is the low pass equivalent signal of x t and is given as x t plus j x hat t minus j 2 pi f c t. This is the low pass equivalent signal of x hat t. So, this is how we define the low pass equivalent signal, but uh, we are not done yet. Now, x l t can be written as x t plus j x hat t e to the power minus j 2 pi f c t this this I can expand as x t cos 2 pi c t plus x hat t sin 2 pi f c t plus j x t sin 2 pi f c t plus x hat t sorry minus this should be a minus here this should be a minus I will correct it here as well minus plus x hat t cos 2 pi f c t 
because there is a minus here. So, it should be a minus sign yeah cos 2 pi f c t. So, this is a complex valued signal. So, this is t and this is called the in phase component x l t plus x i t plus x q t and this is called the in phase component this is called the quadrature and called the quadrature component naturally doing some jugglery we can say that x t or uh, using this jugglery that uh, x l t multiplying these by so since x t equals real part of x l t e to power j 2 pi f c t I can substitute the values and say that x t equals x i t cos 2 pi f c t minus q t sin So, I can represent x t I can represent x t as x t equals x i t cos 2 pi f c t x q t sin 2 pi f c t or you can say that if you go back to your basic communications course this is signal or the signal this is an am signal this is an amplitude modulated signal signal with xi the in phase component and x q t x i t on the in phase component and x q t on the quadrature. This is uh, x t with x t on the in phase component and x q t on the quadrature component or if I have x i t and x q t I can construct x t and if I denote this as the Hilbert transformer, if let this be the Hilbert transformer, then x t the low pass equivalent of a signal. So, now the question is that what is the use of uh, low pass equivalents? So, the biggest advantage of uh, using these uh, or knowing the low pass equivalent of a signal is that or advantage. We can convert any passband signal into 
baseband. So we can convert any passband signal into baseband and naturally having to deal with cos 2 pi FCT and sin 2 pi FCT repeatedly is a problem. Even if I do not say it is a problem, it is cumbersome, it uh, requires uh, too much uh, and too detailed bookkeeping. So, by using low pass equivalents, we can actually get rid of bookkeeping around the carrier frequency and another important result that we have is that uh, like similar to, to low pass signals, we can represent systems in terms of their low pass valence. We can also represent systems in terms of their low pass equivalents. This means that all the passband operations around the carrier frequency can be reduced to simple baseband operations. All the complex operations around the carrier frequency with cos 2 pi FCT, sin 2 pi FCT, band pass filter, all the band pass filters built around carrier frequencies can be built around specific carrier frequencies can also be reduced to their low pass and also be reduced to their low pass equivalents. So, this low pass equivalent analysis hence low pass equivalent analysis provides us with and set of tools. This sense provides us with an important set of tools that can be used, used to analyze the performance of modulated communication systems, fine. So, this is uh, what low pass equivalence and low pass uh, equivalent analysis is all about and uh, so with this we conclude our discussion on uh, low pass equivalence. In the next lecture, we will look at how do we use these concepts to build a low pass equivalent model of noise. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.